Welcome to the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, the space for healers, coaches, and conscious leaders on a mission to elevate collective consciousness. I'm your host, Danny C. Muniz, a former Catholic disciple turned eclectic witch, guiding you through the realms of astrology, spirituality, and the quest to escape the matrix. It's time to unleash the mystic within. Let the transformation begin. friend. (laughs) How's it going? Happy, happy new day. Happy new week. This is our sidereal astrology forecast for the week of February 5th, 2024 through the 11th, which I've heard is Super Bowl Sunday, I think. Not a really big fan of that, but I did hear I did hear some things because there's a lot going on on social media about that particular event for many reasons. Although if I did watch it, it might just be to watch Usher. Anyways, here in this week's Sidereal Astrology Forecast, we are talking about what is going on in our sky. And we have a couple of things that are are shifting, that are happening. This is our week of our new moon in Capricorn. This is uh, the last week of Capricorn season. We're moving into Aquarius next week. We've got Mars moving in to a new beautiful energy. And we've got some conjunctions that we're going to talk about. So we got some energies kind of hanging out together that have been building and we've been talking about them over the past few weeks. If you are catching this, uh, I, this weekly forecast. Uh, this month we did have a full overview of the energy for February, so you can look back for that. Uh, if you're catching this on the channel, um, I'll have it linked here so that you can check it out. If you are watching or watching, <laughs> if you're listening, um, because we do have this now on the brand new podcast, the Cosmic Mystic Podcast. You can find it on all your favorite uh, podcast uh, platforms, and it's there too. So if you just want to listen to it, you can, or you want to like go back and listen to it a couple of times. I have people that do that. They're like, I have to go back and listen because you you say so many things and sometimes I talk too fast. So (laughs) definitely you can go back and listen to it there. Uh, If you want to, if you're on the podcast and you want to see the visuals that I'm talking about, come on over to the YouTube channel, Keeping It Real with Sidereal, and you'll see the actual uh, charts. I was like, what's the word? Charts that are um, that we'll be working with today. So let's go ahead and dive in, my friend. I've got some green juice. What are you drinking today? Let me know. And let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll begin. Okay. So we've got Uh, Let me show you first off, as we always like to do here, is let's talk about where our sun is. Where is our sun? So we can see here our sun is right there. It's currently at 22 degrees Capricorn. So right, we're right at the end of Capricorn season. As I said, this is our last week. We will be shifting out of here. Uh, We can notice, if we just look at this, right, we can notice it's a little lopsided. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on on this half of the chart and and not so much going on over here. So there's a lot of focused energy in particular right up in here in our Capricorn Sagittarius energy up here. Then we've got some guys going on down here, right? We can kind of see a little bit more spread out down here. We've got this concentrated energy that definitely want to talk about because we've... uh, We've got some interesting things here. So (laughs) let's go ahead and talk about, uh, first off, I want to talk about our sun and it is making this sextile. So I want to remind you, this is wrapping up the end of this week. So we've had this going on in our sky and I actually talked about it in the, um, overview. So you can, you can listen to more of it there, but just really quick. These are, our wounds are fueling our imagination right now. It is giving us the desire and the motivation to kind of work through some old traumas, some old insecurities, and bring a new light, a new uniqueness to how we might do that. There's been some things that have coming up for me personally 
uh, most recently. Actually, just talked about this in the Enlightened Soul Circles. So if you not are, if you have not joined that community over on Facebook, Enlightened Soul Circles, uh, I go live every Monday in there and uh, do some breath work, usually some nice meditation of a very short, just bringing us into the present. I usually do an oracle card pull in there, as well as a little, little tiny bit about what the energy is for the week. Um, and then usually tell you to come over here. <laughs> but in there, I was talking about how this um, this idea, right, around money that, and I've been working on my own money beliefs for a very long time because I didn't really have, I didn't grow up with a really positive um, insights on money. It was usually very hard and heavy and difficult. And so, you know, I, although I've been working on it for a very long time, I realized again, there's a new, there was a new layer with this idea of having to work hard to make money and money being this very hard thing to get. Like I had to work. And, and even though my conscious mind was like, no, <laughs> no, it is not. It is easy to make. You have proof that it's easy to make money, right? I still had that idea, but like, I have to actually do something though, right? And I was even like really strong and adamant about like, but I have to do something to get money. Money can't just come. Like I actually have to do something. But I realized there was another layer in there, right? That needed to be looked at. So this is a really, really good uh, time to kind of look at some of those deeper, uh, deeper layers as well. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is we have this square over here to Uranus, which started at the very beginning of this month on the first. And so you know, Uranus is that out of the box thinking. It requires us to be more open minded and extremely flexible, especially when things can be uncertain, when we don't have the solid structure, right? And Capricorn has been asking us to look at our foundations, to look at our structures. Like, what do we have down in place? What is our stability? What is our security? What is that stable ground? What is that foundation? And so I talked about this too in there that you can, we can look at the different areas of our life, right? The will of life. You've probably heard of that. The will of life, where we talk about our relationships, our emotional wellness, our physical wellness, our money, our career or business, um, our, you know, uh, the, our emotional wellness, right? So we can look at the different area, our fun. <laughs> I was like, what's the other one? Our fun and um, recreation, right? So we can look at the different areas of life and we can, we can judge or better word, evaluate where we are on those different areas of life. Am I, you know, on a scale of one to 10, maybe in my, you know, spirituality, there's the eighth one, <laughs> spirituality, my spiritual practice, my connection to the divine, to God, to the universe, maybe I'm like at an eight there, which is great. And I have some solid foundations there, right? Or maybe in my um, relationships, right? Maybe I'm at a three, and if I'm at a three in my relationships, I, maybe I don't have a solid foundation or maybe I am starting to build those solid foundations. So that's why it's so low, right? Or if I look at that eight and say, oh, well, I'm at an eight, which is what you would think would be pretty great. Yes, there's a little bit more to go, but I can look at, is that eight on, was that built on really solid foundations? Is that a false eight? right? So this is, this energy is, is asking us to kind of look at those things and see where we kind of are, what's going on, right? And evaluate for ourselves so that we can put things in place. We can allow ourselves to be open, open-minded, open perspective to where some shifts may need to happen. So we have that energy going on. So let's talk about so we have two things that I want to talk about, um, and then we'll talk about our new moon. So two things I want to talk about is first, Mars is moving into Sagittarius, and Mars is our willpower, it's our drive, it's our motivation, it's like what gets us kind of moving, right? And so we can look to that energy from it when it's changing signs, we can look to say, okay, like what's the drive energy now? So it's been, we can see, 
Um, it's been right here in Sagittarius, which has been in the energy of exploring and adventure and optimism and just like, let's go and, and travel. <laughs> let's go and see the world. Let's go on an adventure. Let's have an adventure. Let's, right. Let's, let's expand our knowledge. Like this, there's really been a lot of energy around that with the Mars in Sagittarius. Well, here's the thing, Mars right here, he's at 29 degrees. If I fast forward this, we're going to see, we're going to see as long as my computer, there we go. <laughs> he moves into Capricorn. So on the 6th, he's going to move into Capricorn and he will be there until March 14th. So he's going to, we got a good month, probably about six weeks, right? With this energy of Mars in Capricorn. So let's talk about where, when Mars is in Capricorn, where our drive, our motivation, our willpower is going to be. Now, I don't like this term and I don't like to use this term, but I'm going to use this term because I know probably a lot of people know this term. Our drive and motivation is in adulting. And for the podcast, I am air quotes adulting. <laughs> I really, really dislike that term. Maybe I should do a whole podcast on it, but I really dislike that term because it's this idea that we have to adult and I have so many thoughts on it, but we're not going to get into that today because that's not what we're talking about. The drive and motivation though, is that energy of responsibility, <laughs> that, that getting organized, getting our quote unquote shit together, planning things out, setting up some structures, setting up some, um, you know, taking the, the, the observations and the evaluation that we had uh, during Capricorn season, right? And the exploration, the adventure, the new learnings that we gained in Sagittarius, we're now taking those and we're getting them together and we're creating a plan. We're getting ourselves organized. So if you have felt this past month like, I not really ready to set goals. I still really, really need to think about this. I really need to take some more time to kind of figure some things out. You are in the right place, my friend. <laughs> you are absolutely okay. When Mars now moves into Sagittarius, now that final energy of like, okay, it's time to get, it's time to get it together. It's time to stop like screwing around. And I'm, I'm going to quote air quote that again, screwing around because I don't really believe we're screwing around. I think we're there's a lot of things that are happening there, but besides that, it is an opportunity for us to now kind of settle in and do the adult, again, air quotes, adult thing. So this is where we will see our drive and motivation over the next six weeks. So, you know, I just finished reading the 12 week year, loved the book, uh, finally realized that that's where all my coaches and mentors have got that information from, because I've known that idea for years and I've worked in that area um, on and off for a very long time. I do like the idea. Um, and so I'm working on myself. I'm building out my plan this week of what my next 12 weeks are going to be and where my energy and focus is going to be on the things that I want to bring into my world the next, uh, for the next 12 weeks. All right. So that was our drive and motivation. Now let's talk about where our, um, well, we do have a couple things actually. Hold on. So this is kind of shifting the energy a little bit. So I do want to talk about this because we do have, when we look at Mars here, he is actually conjunct Pluto. Now the energies are going to be put there. They're going to be coming in closer and then Mars is going to pass Pluto because Pluto moves very, very slowly. Mars moves pretty slow, but not that slowly. And so he's going to come like conjunct. So they're going to hang out. Like they're just like, it's like, they're just meeting, right? If we use my analogy, I like to use is like, they're hanging out at the house, like Mars and like Mars just drove into the driveway or yeah, Mars just drove into the driveway. Mars just got to Pluto's house. That's what's like, that's where that's where we are. They're just coming together. Okay. And when Mars is with Pluto, when they're here, there is an increase in ambition, um, in control, in power, in um at a lower level, it can be selfishness, ruthless behavior, violence. Um, we can like, you know, um, 
be selfish, right? In a not so great way, right? We can, we can be, that's a really like lower vibrating energy and it's higher vibration. It's transformation. It's moving through things. It's raising the vibrational energy. It's um, being able to positively influence those around you. It's stepping into your power. It's manifesting people, <laughs> manifesting opportunities and events. So again, right? Like nothing is good or bad. Nothing is black or white, right? It's there's, it's the energy that we're putting into it. So what energy are you bringing in with this Mars in Pluto? They just got together. Now it can go one way or the other, depending on what is the backdrop of where that house is located, right? Are we in a war zone? <laughs> are we, are we in a I don't know. I think like the mountains in the snow, that might not be lovely for some of you because some of you might be in the snow. I am not. I'm in the, I'm in Texas where it's beautiful today. Like where are you? Where is that backdrop for you? Where are we starting? Take a look at that because we can influence that, my friend. We can influence. Yes, these are influencing us, but we, right, we get to work with them. They don't, they don't rule over us. We get to work with them. All right. The other one I want to show you is we have this sextile here to Neptune. And so this is also, so like Neptune is like calling, right? He's like calling in as like a BFF because <laughs> a sextile is a very, um, it's a very like supportive type energy. And so this is really stepping in more to like our desires. There's more sensitive energy here, more sensual energy here, more healing and soothing. Um, it's like spiritual truths, right? Are, are, are being applied, right? Are, are, are things that we've learned are like, okay, like in our practices, like, okay, I'm ready to now implement this new thing. It's funny. I'm listening to some recordings myself of some past classes that I took from one of my spiritual mentors and I'm listening back and it's like, oh, implementing like the basics, right? Going back to the basics and bringing those basics back into my life, right? Again, foundations, um, really good creative energy. So music, dance, art, like really, really good energy for that. Spending time with friends or in a big group. This is all really, really good energy for that. So there's this like, you know, nice, peaceful, soothing energy with, with Mars. So Mars is kind of relaxed as he's coming to Pluto's house. Like Mars is chilling out. He's, he's taking it easy. He's, 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 he's excited, but he's calm. Okay. Now let's take a look at like, that was our drive and motivation. So let's look at where our mental energy is more of that thinking and communication energy. So for that, we're going to go look at Mer uh, Mercury. So we've got Mercury right here. Now, if I come over here to the fifth right there, he is conjunct. So Mercury is already in the house. <laughs> Mercury and, Pl and Pluto have been hanging out and they're in the house together. So they're, they're hanging out. They're in there. Mars just drove up. Okay. We got the scene. Mercury and Pluto is that depth, depth in thinking, in communicating, wanting to get down and dig up the dirt, wanting to get to the bottom of things, the things that have been troubling, uncovering secrets, unearthing things so that we can, um, learn so that we can evaluate. So we can look at it. It's like, as my love says, it's like, let's just put the shit on the table. So it's like, let's put this out on the table so that we can look at it. We can observe it. We can be real with it instead of like, just kind of holding it back. Right. Like Mercury's like, let's no, let's just put this on the table. Like, let's just, let's just, let's just talk this out. So you might find yourself wanting to, right. Put things on the table you might be wanting to um, use this energy of influence and power and persuasion to influence others, right? This also can be like mental power struggles. This can be egos like going together. My uh, mother-in-law had a situation this past weekend and I was like, oh, yep, that's Mercury and Pluto. It's Mercury and Pluto hanging out there, right? They're, they're butting heads. The egos are like, I didn't do it. Yes, you did. I didn't know. No, I didn't. You're, yes, you did. I have you on video. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. But this is a really good time to 
unearth and bring things, bring things forward. And you will also notice that you're not here for that easy, simple information, chit chat. It's like, let's get down deep. I want to ask questions. I want to go deeper. And so that is where we'll see with Mercury Pluto. The other one though we have, which is coming in on the sixth, we have uh, Jupiter here. So we have the conjunction of Pluto and Mercury. And now we've got, again, Jupiter's calling in. Um, and with this particular square, because sometimes square, it can be like, I'm going to call and I'm going to give you shit, right? The Mercury square Pluto is like, I I'm, I'm, I'm like supporting you. I'm encouraging you. I'm like, I'm like amping you up. It's kind of like that, uh, that, that person that you have in your life that like totally amps you up. That's like, that's the girl, like your hype girl. There you go. It's like, what's the term hype girl. I used to know a girl that was a hype girl. She was amazing. I don't remember. We lost track. Her name was Kristen. I do remember that. She was absolutely, she was, she was the most amazing hype girl you could ever imagine. Nowadays I have Mrs. Jennifer Hart from the Connected Soul Network, who is my hype girl. She's my current hype girl. Absolutely adore her. But she, right? Like it's that person that is um, it's that energy of like optimism and like really taking in like the big view. It's like bird's eye view energy where you're just like taking the big, the big, uh, the big perspective where we can be over optimistic. Um, we can over estimate things um, because we're talking about mercury we can also be exaggerating over exaggerating things where it's like um there were you know let's say there were like a hundred people in the room you're like there were thousands of people right you can over exaggerate but you can also over exaggerate by promising too much by like telling yourself like oh yeah I got plenty of time to do that I've got I got all the time in the world to do that and then realizing like oh shoot I don't have any time to do that right or saying I can get this done by this time and that's probably not going to be the case because I overestimated the amount of time it was going to take me to do something so we can do that even, like if you already do that I know there's right I, I know people I do that to my I do it myself but where they'll like overestimate their time or they're, they'll over exaggerate something, like we might see that doubled or tripled during this time. So I want you to be careful of that. <laughs> be careful that you're not quoting somebody like, yes, I can have it done by this time or it'll only take me this long or um, I I'll be there in an hour. And then it's like three hours later and they're like, what the heck, right? We, we can definitely overdo it. So be careful with that too. Um, the other thing is like focusing on the big picture and not so much the details. So be mindful of that because you might miss some like fine little details, like go over, read that email again, read that text again, or read that post again, right? Read that caption again, because we might be missing things because we're just like looking at the bigger picture and not really fine tuning in on the details. Okay. So that's where our mental energy, our communication energy is going to be over the next week. Now let's take a look at our new moon because we do have our new moon coming up on Friday, the 9th to nine. And it is, I believe 459, 4.59 PM, uh, central. So that's 2.59 Pacific and 5.59 Eastern, 3.59 mountain. Okay. That's all I know. <laughs> all right. We have this new moon here. We can see the sun and moon are conjunct. So the sun and moon are hanging out, right? The sun, the moon came to hang out with the sun. And so the sun's hanging out here in Capricorn and all the moon is hanging out in Capricorn. So if we look here, we can see who's, who's calling in because we don't have any con other conjunction. So we have no other energy influencing it inside this house, right? But they are like calling in or they're like posting on social. So we've got Chiron making the sextile to the sun and the moon. So Chiron is our wounded healer, okay? So this is really good opportunity for growth and healing, especially around insecurities, because we're talking about Capricorn energy. We're talking about limitations and our boundaries, right? Um, and so this is a really time for us to work through, right, grow in, in those areas. Um, 
really intense, like more emotional awakening um, that can be motivation to heal as well, right? Like realizing like there can be a, a very emotional experience maybe that you've just had or is happening that it's like, oh, right? And you can find this new depth there, especially with that Pluto in Mercury we just talked about, right? Pluto and Mercury, like finding this really depth, this really good depth to whatever that emotional experience that you might uh, be having. This is also a really good time, just on a side note, to attract people through business, like or family, like family connections or friend connections are really good time for this as well. Okay. The other thing that I want, want to look at here is this energy to Uranus. So we've got this here and this is actually, Chiron is conjunct uh, the South node here. And remember the South node is not a planet or um, an asteroid or anything. It's actually a mathematical point. And so, but this energy South, South node, um, I'm sorry, North node, I was going to South node is down here. North node is up here. It is also around our future and our direction in where we're going. And so if we look at Chiron here, it's like, what do we need to heal? What do we need to shift? What do we need to reimagine that we can leave behind, right? so that we can move into the future. And so this might be as you're thinking about your goals for the year or your three-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan, whatever that might be, like what, what is it currently that I can, the ideas, the experiences, how can I shift those in a way? Because I have a firm belief that, you know, people say like, oh, I already healed that. And then it's like coming up again and you're like, what the hell? How come I thought I healed that? Like it's not a one and done. Healing is not a one and done. It's like a layer that has been peeled, like off the onion, right? It's a layer that has been peeled. And the way I see it is it's just a shift in the way, in the, in the relationship to it. So it's a shift in how you interact with that thing that used to really hurt you and cause you like to shut down completely. It's like you no longer shut down right? you just like, oh, okay. And then there's like something will come up and then it's like, oh, okay. Right. And you have to take that next look at it. So keep in mind that like things, things need, things may need to come up to shift out of, especially as it relates to moving into the new thing. So it's like, what, what foundations do I have that are working and what what ones do I need to shift out of? Okay. Now, the other thing here is we do have that square, as we talked about earlier, to uh, Uranus, right? So Uranus brings that very impulsive energy, very um, jumpy. It doesn't have patience. Um, it doesn't like to commit or focus on anything. It's like, it just wants stimulation and excitement. It's the rebel, right? It goes against everything. It wants to be free. Like, don't tie me down. Don't hold me back. So it's like looking at these things, these foundations, these things that may be holding you back, that maybe once brought excitement, but they're not here for the long term. It's like, what is it that is not here for the long term? What is it that got me to this point that now I'm ready to move, move forward with in a different way? This new moon is really asking us to look at those foundations, to look at what is um, currently present for us that we want to shift out of and we want to move forward with. All right, my friend, this has been your sidereal astrology forecast for the week of February 5th through the 11th. Um, I do want to let you know that there is an opportunity to learn to be a conscious manifester, to ground more deeply with yourself. If you are wanting some personal growth, some personal development, to learn how to be a conscious manifester, my friend, this energy, as you can see, we're going through this like transformation um, energy here. If you are wanting to dive into that, my cosmic alignment, next round of cosmic alignment starts on February 12th. So it'll start next week, uh, where we will go on our 60 day journey to become a conscious manifester. So if you are looking for, you know, a little bit, 
a little bit, maybe you want to take a little bit of a deep, a little bit of a dive into your thoughts, into a daily practice that will help you really set yourself up for success to attract and manifest what it is that you desire, then I'd invite you to come join us, uh, play with us inside Cosmic Alignment. Uh, we do begin on February 12th, as I said. And so you can join anytime that week. I'll link anytime that week. I will put a link down in the show notes or in the description box uh, if you are interested in learning more about that and taking that next step. All right, my friend, have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. And as always, remember to close your eyes and take a deep breath with me. And find peace. Mm-hmm.